Hello, investing friends. Welcome into Investors Club. Got a great show for you. Cassava Sciences, big volume for a second day, up up 8%, was up uh, like 23% at one point. A few stocks have soared and been knocked down a little bit, but this is on the back of up more than 20% yesterday because uh, the Journal of Prevention of Alzheimer's Disease published a no evidence of data manipulation uh, and we are not taking any action on these fudsters and shorts telling us uh, that your stuff, telling us that your stuff, uh, that cassava stuff, checking the audio, telling us that cassava science is science is wrong. Let's get right to the, it was good, good stuff yesterday getting right to 27 people. Great to see you. Great to see you guys. Already got 23 likes. Great. I guess uh, there was more people here when the stock was going higher <laughs> and uh, left 35. Great to see you guys. So uh, Cassava Science up 7.91%, pretty good. Look at the volume, 14.32 million. Remember yesterday, we looked at the average volume for the three previous months. It was 1.49 million. Uh, today, we, we were over what? Over 30 million in volume yesterday. Today, the volume is 14.3 million already. 14. So remember that there's only 44 million shares in circulation. And then the average, just from yesterday's 30-something million shares that traded, the average th past three-month volume went from 1.49 million in one day. The average volume went to 2.04 million. So they already they upped the average volume by like 33% already. So uh, let's take a look at the no data manipulation. Also, real quick, take a look at, here's MindMed. MindMed sort of had the same pattern as Cassava. MindMed is up 44%. It was up 70% at one point. This is a psychedelic stock. We'll take a look at why that one is up, what the catalyst was up for. It. Uh, there's a, a student, a young student, I think and his father as well, that, that are uh, becoming activist investors in that one, perhaps. So it's kind of an interesting story. We'll take a look at that one. But we'll leave this on Cassava. Let's get to so no evidence let's get this up here and get the stock up as well come back come back all right so no evidence of data manipulation in science publication on semifilam uh all right we'll take a look at uh there's oh 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 and very big news we've been saying that the city university of new york uh, was going to do an investigation, or at least we thought, we hoped so. Mr. Barbier had, had publicly said he wanted them to, but that's all we had. He publicly said he wanted them to, and we kind of talked amongst ourselves and said they were doing an investigation. Well, they confirmed in this press release the City University of New York is, is doing an investigation. That's huge. We've got another huge catalyst coming, and that hopefully, hopefully, Hopefully that comes before January 16th. What's January 16th? That's the dismissal hearing of which all eight lawsuits against Cassava are writing to be dismissed either directly or, or there's stays to see what happens in that one. So hopefully that comes before the, the, dismi the dismissal hearing. Okay, so no evidence of data manipulation in science publication on smith -Lam. Cassava Science was recently informed by the Journal of Prevention of Alzheimer's Disease that there is no convincing evidence to support allegations of data manipulation in a 2020 paper. So this is one of the most recent pub the most recent publications on semifilam co-authored by the company's personnel and its science collaborators. JPAD communicated the following statement to the company on Monday, August 15th, after the close of the market, which is reprinted below. They said that's very interesting that they said uh Monday, August 15th, after the close, so that uh, I think after seeing the form fours for uh, Eric and so that's probably, I'm sure Eric was one of those put, put, put it in there for Eric and Sandy that they bought on August 12th after the open label data, but before this, this, uh, this, uh, this finding. Uh, so that the JPAD says, We have completed our review of your article. Uh, we've completed a review of your article, PT125, PTI125. So the company used to be Pain Therapeutics Incorporated to so PTI125. That was Semifilam's old name. PTI125 reduces biomarkers of Alzheimer's disease in patients for 10 points. It was PTI125. It's now Semifilam. Semifilam's the name that uh, the, one of the, the regulatory agencies gave it. 
What was its name in between? The regulatory agencies gave it another name first. Now it's sumifilam. Sumifilam. Okay, so we did not find convincing evidence of manipulation of data or intent to mislead, and therefore take no action regarding the published paper. Terrific. No, uh, we, we do not find convincing evidence of manipulation of data or intent to mislead, and therefore take no action regarding the published paper. Awesome. Uh, we have said from the onset, these guys didn't do anything wrong. Mr. Barbier says, quote, from the onset, I have said that allegations of research misconduct are false. And for good reason. I see no supporting evidence for the allegations. Now, that's interesting that he uses that, that, that sort of legal language. I see no uh, supporting evidence for the allegations. He wasn't there for all of this research himself. So he says, I see no supporting evidence. Uh, I'm hopeful that written pronouncements from neutral and independent science experts will help close the chapter of baseless attacks against our science. At some point, it becomes irrational for our detractors to repeat over and over again the same old tired mantra of data manipulation. I've got bad news for you there, Mr. Barbier. As we said yesterday, until you guys get uh, bought by Pfizer or something like that, they're not going to stop, we don't think. Uh, but we are hopeful as well. But then they go into the other written pronouncements of uh, how their data is not manipulated. So he is hopeful that written pronouncements from neutral and independent science experts will help close the chapter of baseless attacks. And so here are some other ones that they also got uh, recently. In May 2022, Neurobiology of Aging investigating and found no evidence of data manipulation in a paper on Smithland published in 2017. Editor-in-Chief said, Rader has made the editors aware of concerns regarding the above reference report. These issues were conveyed to the authors who provided a detailed response. All available input was considered by the handling editor and handling editor and editor in chief. Overall, the editors did not find compelling evidence of data manipulation intended to misrepresent the results. And then on December 2021, Cassava Science announced that neuroscience investigated and found no evidence of data manipulation in a paper published in Journal 2005. Editor-in-Chief stated, after careful examination of these original material, neuroscience found no evidence of manipulation of the Western data blot data or other figures of this publication. And then the month before that, November 2021, Cassava Science has announced that the Journal of Neuroscience investigated and found no evidence of data manipulation in a paper of Smithland published in July 2012. The editor-in-chief previously, previously authorized Cassava Sciences to share a statement on this matter, including no evidence of data manipulation was found for Western blot data. Do you hear that, Elizabeth Bick? Uh, okay, and then here is the part about SUNY. A related investigation by academic authorities at the City University of New York is ongoing after four dismissals of this uh, data manipulation allegations and the citizens petition dismissal, it is a foregone conclusion that Ms. Dr. Wang, who is still teaching there and maybe teaching more than anybody else in his department, it, it, he, didn't, he didn't do anything in the first place and they're not gonna pretend he did. So that's gonna be great when that does come out. So they're, they, they're saying it is happening. A related investigation by academic authorities at the City University of New York is ongoing. So this is, we're getting confirmation, that's terrific. Pending a public response from the City University of New York, both Neurobiology of Aging and the Journal of Neuroscience previously issued an outstanding expression of concern, which is a non-standardized type of editorial notice used by academic publishers to raise awareness to possible problem, according to the Council of Science Editors. So perhaps that was, perhaps those uh, journals were indications that there was gonna be a City University of New York investigation. But this is the first time we're getting uh, the, the company saying there is one, so that's great news. And then here's Mind Medicine. The stock price of Mind Meds surged over 70%, so 70% pre-market. Investors appear to be responding to a report uh, that a 20-year-old university student made a $110 million profit with a one-month bet on Bed Bath & Beyond stock. Uh, the, that 20-year-old Jake Freeman and his family had acquired nearly 5 million shares in Bed Bath Beyond for 550 for a total of 25 million. Then it soared 500%. And then some of the posts on Reddit were written by Freeman uh, also discuss MindMed. Also mentions MindMed. Okay, report. So those guys, so they're, they're those two people, or those two, Freeman and his dad, I guess, uh, were taking an activist position in MindMed. And then here is the... Uh, 
Max Payne for Cassava. Yesterday we were up to 3487 and we said Max Payne was 25 and it settled at 25 something. So Max Payne is still 25 today. However, it could, there is pain at, if you look, the green here is the calls and the red is the puts. This thing won't get any bigger for me. Uh, so you can see there's a bunch of calls at 70, a bunch of calls at 90, a bunch of calls at 40, but and, and there's a bunch of calls and puts at 30. So here at 25, a bunch of calls and puts, and that's where the max pain is, because there's a bunch, there's calls to the left, there's a bunch of puts to the left, and there's puts to the right, but mostly it's a bunch of calls to the right. So max pain is where the buyers of options lose. So if you're the writers of options, both calls and puts, uh, you win. The, the, the max pain is where is the point where the people that wrote the options win and the people that bought the options lose the most. And so it's 25 right now, but it could be, it could, we could settle at 30. The market might be happy to settle at 30 and, and, and hurt people that way, you know. So we'll see. 27 bucks uh, right now. With that, my investing friends. Let's go to the phones. All right, great to see you guys. Got a, a bunch of good comments. Good to see you. Uh, 69 people. All right, great to see you. Click the links in the description and join the newsletters. Click the links in the descriptions and join the newsletters. You're going to be glad you did. Free stuff, great deals. And those newsletters, if you sign up for the pay, one, the pay ones, they pay for themselves in uh, more than 10 times over almost right away. Looking at this light, got a new light. And now I remember why I don't have that light there because there's the glare. The glare. Well, so we'll, well, I'm trying to work on the light. A lot of light today. We'll see how the lot of light goes. A little bit of an angle to the shot. Doing some stuff. Paul, blockchain would have been nice to have the during these and news releases. They are just indiscriminately moving naked short paper, flooding the market, the whole price in place for their options. Wide open fraud. I couldn't agree more. This amount of, uh, what are we at? 15 million? We're at 14.68 million shares. There's only 44 million in the float. And yesterday there was 30 something. So already there's all of the shares, every share traded. Did you trade all your shares? I did not trade any. Uh, everybody would have traded all their shares. So I, I completely agree. Great news on Sanford Robertson buying and, and, it, and it spiked. This thing is real. If it's real, it goes sky high. This valuation makes no sense. And then another dismissal of the data manipulation claims. It wants to sky and it gets crushed again with lots and lots of volume. I agree that it's what they're doing. They're, they're, they're creating shares. In my opinion, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Nevertheless, we got a nice pop. Look at the, uh, we got the stair stepping up. Remember we said that, well, we said this yesterday. Remember we said yesterday, you get two days in a row sometimes, a lot of times with cassava in these, in these wild uh, up days with a lot of volume, we were getting two in a row sometimes. We got two big volume days in a row here. And we, and it, it, we got with the big giant pop and then maybe it gets cut in half or so. And then the big giant pop cut in half, more than cut in half now. But uh, it's, there, it is following that pattern, following that pattern, <clears throat> following that pattern. Thank you, Paul. Wide open fraud. Totally agree. My friend Colin, great to see you going up to 140 this year. I truly think it's been up higher than that already. And now things are much better. Uh, great data of all kinds has come in since it hit 148 or whatever it hit on the, on the six month data. So yeah, we've had, we've got all kinds of stuff and we'll have even more coming. Absolutely. Larry, a great day for Saba. Would you explain in terms of written for stock for dummies, Max Payne? Yes. Now I did not knowing your question was there. I did explain what Max Payne is. I will explain more if you ask again, if that did not answer it. John, uh, John, to be honest, I've lost track of who's investigating what with Saba. What's next? What we should be focusing on as catalyst? Thanks. Yes, yeah, so there's eight lawsuits against Cassava right now. I should say there's four federal lawsuits, class actions against Cassava Sciences, three federal against executives, one state against executives. Those four against executives are supposedly, purportedly, on behalf of Cassava. So I think it's just the hedge funds and shorts are making it, uh, trying to get the, the shareholders on their side to go after executives but we're not going for it. And they're making just the exact same claims that they're making against the company, this time just making it against the executives. They're saying that they, uh, similar claims anyway. 
Uh, but all of those, the, the four federal ones against cassava got combined to one. The three federal ones against the executives got combined to one. And all three of those cases, the four, the four, the three, and the one state, or there, so there's now three total, the four against cassava combined to one, the three against federal against executives combined to one, and the state against executives, which is a, sing a singular one. The four that were combined to one have a dismissal hearing, and the other four are stayed pending that dismissal hearing January 16th. So uh, that, the, those, that's, that's the roundup of the lawsuits against them as it is now. But it's going to be a big dismissal hearing. That'll be big. That should be huge. This is having four, what is it? This is the fourth, I guess, plus the citizens petition itself was dismissed. The fourth, the fourth, no, no, this is, they're not manipulating data plus the citizens petition as well. Gotta fix my color, I suppose. Eh, it's better. We'll reach ATH by end of the year, all time high by the end of the year. It sure could. Well, we got, we'll have great catalysts by the end of the year. Goose, morning, Joe. Does it mean anything that Remy didn't halt trading pending news like he's done before? No, that's a good question, but I, I don't think it's completely in his, I don't think he can just halt when he wants to. He might ask, but it, it, I think it's up to the NASDAQ itself. We've looked at it before. I think it's up the NASDAQ itself and, and they leave it. They, of course, leave it wide open when they can basically do whatever they want uh, when we looked at the language. It's a good question, but uh, I, I, this, is the, this is the fourth journal that said no data manipulation, so I don't, I don't, I don't think we got four halts. GRP PR, what is, what is GRP? I, I must ask, what's, what, is, what is group PR? Group public relations. Is it a good strategy to wait until Dr. Wang clearance to load up on some more shares I tell you, partner, the short-term moves of this stock are beyond me. And like I've said before, we've lived through this, watching it every day. And I still, still couldn't redraw the chart from the past, like month to month, what, what happened in what month and, and, and in what week and all these things. And we, we just lived through it. So to define, divine the short-term moves going forward, what month to month, week to week, is there's just no, <laughs> this stock makes no sense on a short-term basis that moves on a short-term basis. The market itself, you could say, makes no sense on a short-term basis. So uh, it, seriously, could you redraw the chart from the last 12 months or, the, or, the, or the, for the amount of time you've been following it? I don't think I could, and, and we've, we've lived through it. So I, 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 am, I am hesitant to counsel you on the short-term moves, my friend. I say hodl. Take whatever your position is and hodl. Tim... Tim, this was obvious uh, collusion, which is why I say, oh, this was the obvious conclusion, which is why I say the City University of New York is a nothing burger too, all resulted from short hits. Anyone can accuse anyone of anything. Whoa, I'll move myself over here. Like I say, Joe that uh, lives on Mars, like I can say that Joe lives on Mars, well, because I do, because I do, me and Elon hanging out. Greg, what's up, Joe? What's up, Greg? Great to see you, my friend. You can hang out on Mars with Elon and I. Great to see you, my friend. Paul, this certainly puts pressure on SUNY to make a statement, the City University of New York to make a statement. Yeah, I, I would think they would do so. I, I, I must think that Mr. Barbier must have spoken to them. That they haven't, they've been so careful with their language lately that he must have, have spoken to them and... and made sure it was okay to say that, 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 that in fact something is for, and, and the fact that he said that maybe that for, foreshadows that something is coming soon. Maybe, maybe. Paul, great work, Joe. Thank you, my friend. Great work to everybody else. Thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, uh helping somebody brought this. Was it, uh, I'm not, I don't remember. Don't remember sorry. I'll, I'll look who brought this to me in the discord, but somebody else found this before I did. Great work uh, team. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Kevin. Power moves, let's go savages. Power moves, loves you. Happy loves you. Uh, see what I did right there. <laughs> Power moves, loves you. Happy loves you. See what I did right there. <laughs> Frankly, I don't, but. Uh, Tom Lu, nice profit from Saba and out $33 back in at $27. Nice swing trade, my friend. Can't, uh, can't blame you if you get it right. Great news, I'm, I'm hodling. Yeah, me too, my friend. This, the short-term moves of this stock are impossible. 
So, it, and, and I've, tr the, I, it looks to me like the drug works and it's safe. It looks great. So there's going to be, there's, it is going to be volatile and, uh, there's going to be, uh, lies and all that stuff, but hodling, hodling. And then we get to have great days like yesterday and today. Total shares are 40 million, but yesterday's volume was more than 30 million. A lot of uh, trading must come from shorting. That's right, naked shorting, fabricating the shares out of thin air. If you were trying to sell your house and somebody <laughs> did that with your house or your car, they would go to jail. Jake, Joe, can you touch on how reputable this John L is in comparison to the other two or Plyos One? <laughs> Oh, this journal is uh, in comparison to the other two or plus one. Laugh my butt off. Journal, journal. Uh, oh, on plus one. Yeah, uh, I don't think I, I'll get, I'll get, that's a good idea. Remember we, we looked on plus one? <laughs> uh, that was, you could see how reputable the journals were. And uh, the one that, uh, why do we look, was it, was it, I think it was where Elizabeth Bick was published or something. It was something like that. It was, it was just, it looked good for cassava and bad for the detractors. We looked at the, the rankings of the journals. Uh, I'll have to find that again, my friend. Anthony, good to see you. Remy had spoken of a non-dilutive partner in the poor chains me last August. It's been a year and no partners. Yeah, he's, he made, what did he say? Large non-dilutive funding, cash infusions, large non-dilutive cash infusions. And they've gotten funding from NIH since then. It hasn't been humongous, but it's been, so you could, I mean, that's all, it's a relative term, right? So he could argue. Uh, oh, I never did, I never did the welcome. Uh, we'll do it in a minute. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, that's, if we, if we do, if we do ever uh, speak to him, it's a fair question that they put that out there and we've not seen that. So that's a fair question. Although in, in, and it did sound like partnership, Anthony, as you say. What it sounded like was upfront payment and milestones. It sounded like they had a partnership. Maybe all of this FUD, all of this attacks scared them off. I don't know. Don't know. Or all of the attacks destroyed the share price and that blew the deal. That they were the, the, the acquiring or partnering company no longer wanted the, the term since the, this company was, was valued so much less. I don't know. Anthony says the same thing twice because it's so important. Oh, poor chains, partner in the poor chains, partner in the coming months. So when he said, <laughs> I was wondering what that was. Remy had spoken of a non-dilutive partner in the poor chains. Poor chains got autocorrected to coming months. <laughs> From poor chains to coming months. Tim it's unfortunate that FUD news can drop a stock by 50%, but clearing of FUD news only gives back five to 10. I also accuse Mr. of being a robot and not a dog. I wish he was a robot. His, uh, his eyes are, are, are going and his hips are going. It's, and, and, but the, the, the FUD news dropped by 50%. Like we said yesterday, it seems that the direct manipulation of the naked shorting creating the shares is what's driving it down. And then they put a FUD hit piece to cover it up. Uh, so, Sue. So. Thank you, Tim. Hans, good to see you, my friend. Guten Tag, Herr Schmidt. Jake, check the impact factors of the journals. So that's the, yeah, the plus one. Tom Liu, this stock is aiming for free shares as profit and keep them until the end. Very strange trading pattern. I mean, if you were trying to like, use the chart to figure out what was going to happen with this stock, very tough stuff. Original name spelled Sumai Phylam. Silver, you got it. hi -O Silver, you got the trivia question. So it was PTI-125, then Sumifilam, S-U-M-I, that's right, was spelled Sumifilam. But I believe it was the World Health Organization who stated there was a drug out east that had the same spelled name. So they swapped the I and the U to Semifilam precisely, precisely. The way I remembered it was, it might have been, was it World Health or was one of those? I'm not sure who does it. Is that who it was, World Health? And then I think I remembered it was a, a company in the UK had one or something like that, but east of here where I am. Maybe it, was, maybe it wasn't UK, maybe it was farther east. That's just what I remember. Nice, 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 Silver. 
Simu fan equals NZT. Hey, you're, you're I, I like that. But you're, you're a Simu fan. You're being a fan of, 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 the, of the drug, being a Simu fan. Good to see you, Fernando. Paul, also ever wonder why we hear total crickets from the analyst community. Well, I mean, we, we actually, we just got Jones trading uh, with a $110 reaffirmed price target. Uh, somebody else just reaffirmed a buy. They lowered the, seven, the target from 72 to 58 because the market sold off or something, something like those numbers. Uh, B. Riley, I guess that might have been. Uh, we hear a little bit from him. Trin, again, good to see you. Come on, people. Journal of Sciences and The New Yorker. Which one is more science and trustworthy? Ag agreed. The great point. They've got uh, The New Yorker, The New York Times, and The Daily Mail, <laughs> and those rags. Uh, they talk about celebrities. And now we have scientific journals saying, we looked into this and there's nothing to see here. Yeah, which one? Which one of those? Great point. Great point, Trin. Buying more today, Joe. Greg, I love it. Uh, I love it, my friend. Uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you look at the science, I think this is a, if you buy here today at this particular point, the shorts are doing us a favor and one day the share count will get righted. When that day is, who knows? Best of luck to you. Good luck to all. Good luck to Greg. Tom Lou, Joe did those interviews and no one, Joe did those interviews and no one seems to give a dime if these regulators, denial is not a river of Egypt, Egypt, except the fact the drug is working well. The drug looks like it's working really well, like incredibly well. Uh, all along it has. It's, we've learned to, uh, that the system doesn't want, uh, the system that we thought, <laughs> remember, 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 were we ever so young? We thought at AAIC they were going to be welcomed and cheered. And all, all the whole community, uh, the whole scientific community, it seems, is just uh, self-serving parties, big pharma and everybody trying, if, if they didn't come up with it, they, they want to destroy it. So it's working really well. It's not getting any fanfare. But all look, from the beginning, it looked like it was working really well. All of this FUD, it was all nonsense, all nonsense. Jake, I'm able to wait for the dividends after approval. Big money. Yeah. The, the, if, what if you think about this as a dividend stock? Now, it could just get bought out, but that would be if you buy this for the income and then one day you're in it for the for dividends, you could have you could literally perhaps one day have dividends as big as the share price. Semifilam works, period. I totally agree, my friend. They've got placebo already, biomarkers, 100 people at a year, year long and most improved. That's incredible. That's that's unheard of. It works, period. Heck yeah. Fernando, Semifilam equals NZT is limitless. I don't, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what NZT is, but you got it, my friend. I'm with you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, John. Great to see you. Wow, 80 people. Great job, Joe. 61. I don't know what I've don't know what I've said since uh, since 80, but great to see you guys. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, Jake Q10. Uh, mentioned today regarding lawsuits, court today or something. Mentioned today. Good morning. Let me, Jake, can you expound on that, please? Ishmael. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Ishmael. Great to see you, my friend. Can we see that flashing sign again? Well, why the heck not? So that's the, that's the, there's a couple of, I don't want to. I don't want to cycle through. There's too many. There's too many settings, and then I'll get lost trying to find my way back. But uh, but great idea. We should do that every day. Chuck, my friend, great to see you. Hi, Joe. Will Saba go after the shorts? What type of discipline or fine could they receive? Uh, it's so tough, my friend. I don't know. I I we we have wanted uh, them to go after the shorts. And when I, I talked with someone the other day and they thought that uh, there was a counter suit and I was so excited to find that out. And then we, then we found out, no, there's not a counter suit at all. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, so I, I would, I mean, could they sue? I don't know. I mean, I think that they would if they could, I guess. Uh, and we looked at like Patrick Byrne. Hey, he did everything you possibly could. Remember this is, they have a game plan. Uh, like the lawyer... Wes Christensen or Wes Christian showed us that he went through the game plan. We went through it twice here on the show. They have a game plan. Everything they do to all these companies is exactly what they're doing to Cassava and these other companies. I don't think they've ever been able to sue. Patrick Byrne figured it out. That's why the blockchain is the answer. 
and they just have the uh, the politicians to uh, to say, okay, that's you can't do that because that would work. Uh, so I don't know what they can do. Uh, Jordan uh, Thomas is Jordan Thomas, uh, who who's that? The lawyer. Uh, people think that maybe there's some, maybe he did something wrong. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't, I don't know. But again, if they, if these people did do anything wrong and you could go after them, it seems that they would. And then again, in all these other examples that I don't think there's any, they, they're, what they're doing to Kasav, they're doing it like on overdrive, but it's the same stuff they do, they've done, same type of stuff they do to others. And I don't think there's any successful lawsuits. Maybe there are, I'm not sure. Not sure, but it's a good question. What can what can we do? Because I know there's a lot of people that, that would like to do stuff. The Fudsters are as credible as the GOP these days. Thank you for the question, Chuck. The Fudsters are as credible as the GOPs these days. Global, I'm not going to get uh, uh, political, but great to see you, my friend. Thanks for being here. Greg, when is the readout? I know you said it before. Sorry, I was trading <laughs> the readout. So there is... Year long, uh, all 200 people in the open label that uh, was completely enrolled in September last year. So September this year. So next month, how do you like that? Net 200 people. The clock starts ticking next month. Uh, Mr. Barbier had originally said October, and then he said, uh, "I mean Q4, Q4." Uh, so sometime in Q4, maybe even there's an I guess there's an outside chance we could get it September, but October I guess because that's what he originally said. And then we're going to get, it seems, CMS data from six months. So after the year-long open label, people go into six months CMS. There could be a small delay, but not a long delay. And so six months after September of last year, that part will be done. So March, April, May, June. They said Q3, so July, but that was an estimate. And they, they said Q3 approximately, meaning... Uh, meaning it's, it's not going to be the full year. It's going to be the six month data. So anyway, we'll get, uh, around probably October, we'll get the full open label and then probably around be sometime between April and July, we'll get the six month placebo, which could be huge. Could be huge. Great buying up here. That's the spirit. My friend looks like you probably just made a quick buck as well. Jacob next week should be very interesting for Sava with all these Baloney options, market manipulations out of the way. Yeah, is this a, does this happen to be a big? So there's there's weekly and monthlies as well. So the options, if this happens to be a monthly expiry, I didn't check actually. I don't play. I used to play sometimes the options. I don't play them anymore. Uh, so if if these are if this is a monthly expiry or it's not and it's not even every month. It's like it's only some months. Then they have uh, extra volume. So they can be more influential on the market. So maybe that's what Jacob is saying. Could be, could be. Good point, my friend. Mike, hi, Joe. Could the share movement be also caused by day traders buying stock, then short the stock over and over again? Yeah, it, it certainly could. But uh, I mean, I, I, I guess it could. But the shorting, it, it costs money to short. If you go to short it right now, I'm sure it's all, this stock has been hard to borrow since the beginning because all the legitimate short shares have been borrowed. And so now you can't get them anywhere. The only place you can get them from is when the prime broker creates them out of nothing, knowing that they're going to fail to actually deliver them. They have the right to say, we'll get it to you. We think we can do it. Trust us. And then they don't. <laughs> and they know they can't. And then we saw emails from Goldman Sachs where the guy says, uh, we're planning ahead to fail. Go ahead and, and say, yes, you can have the shares, uh, and then we'll, we'll just never deliver them. So, uh, and, and, so, and these, these hard to borrow stocks. So yeah, see in, in your, in your, it, you're saying that could this be people shorting it, but, uh, in order to short it, you have to borrow it. So this is, if, if somebody's borrowing it and there's no shares left to borrow, it is still the prime brokers creating these shares with the shorts buying them. So, Tesla stock split is on 824. Any predictions on share price before then? Uh, I mean, I guess in general, the these big tech stocks that have been doing splits the last, whatever, five years have been doing well afterward. But the last five years, the big tech stocks have just been doing well, period. 
So, it, uh, of course, we know that the split doesn't really matter at all for anything. It, it will make the stock easier uh, to buy for retail like one at a time, like one share at a time, I guess. Or it just looks more like it could explode if it's a smaller one. So maybe people will buy it more. Frankly, I don't think it'll have a much of an impact. I think Tesla will do what Tesla does, which will be volatile. But I don't, I don't think it'll have much of an impact. Thank you, Tim. James, good morning, Joe uh, from Florida. Good morning, James from Florida. Good morning, sunshine. John, just pregame warm-ups before a real short squeeze. That's what I think as well. This is the preview. This is the, the this is the this is the taste. This is the the uh, appetizer. When it does happen, Sava will shoot past 100. We are heading right back into dead stock doldrums, but wait until April or SUNY. But we, we that's there's we oh yes, we've got the starting in September, the clock is ticking. Starting next month, the clock is ticking for the full open label 200 people and then starting around March or April the, the clock is ticking for the CMS but on January 16th we've got the dismissal hearing and then as you point out we've got SUNY as well so there's other really good catalysts thank you John silver I saw block put out an article about the recent insider buying probably to tip off the shorts surely not to say anything good about Sava Oh, uh, a, a block over at Seeking Alpha, the uh, the, the biotech, the biotech uh, editor. And while I'm thinking of biotech, somebody asked about the show because in this and the stock split was it the same? Who just asked about the stock split? Tim, was it you that was asking about? Somebody was asking about: Are there any biotechs that's that are over a thousand and should cassava split uh, or, or the biotechs? I looked. There's none. I I sorted. Uh, on I, on all the healthcare stocks on Yahoo on a screener, and there's only two that are above a thousand, and neither of them are biotechs. It was like Danaher and some other device company. So no, there's not. There are no biotechs over a thousand bucks. Silver. Uh, so and so so Block over at Seeking Alpha put out an article on the recent insider buying, probably to tip off the shorts, not to say anything good about Saba. They've also got to appear neutral, I guess. It's also just anything Sava gets clicks as well. Tim, hopefully this will help trial enrollment. Let's get these trials fully enrolled and just sit back, wait for the money to print. Yep. That's a great point. That's a great point. Uh, so the getting these, yeah, because Sava can say there's nothing to see here. Think of all the damage that uh, these morons are doing, keeping people out of the trials, trying to sabotage these, this company. Kevin, are there any journals left that are still reviewing cassava research that have not cleared cassava? Great question. I think so, because I think there was five journals, I think. So I think there's maybe one more, something like that. Or there was five at once, maybe six, something like that total. Quezzy, my friend, great to see you. All right, you're here, you're here live. Great to see you, my friend. I'm so happy you're here. Joe, my man, good to see you. Good to see you, my friend. Sorry to digress. I have been reading about IKT. That's okay. We love talking about Inhibicase and want to take a position. Apart from their website, is there any material you can signpost me to as due diligence, please, loked? Well, I'll say the uh, the interviews, although the, the, the interviews, we did our three interviews with uh, with Dr. Milton Werner. The, uh, those those three. Uh, the only, the best, the, so this is a good, a good question in general. If you like a stock, if you like a biotech stock, where do you start? Where do you start? I like to start on the profile. So we, you already know the profile is a biotech. I like to start with, uh, I, I like to start and this, this is, I mean, impromptu. So, you know, roll with me here. I like to start making sure you're in the right area. So you, you already know the stock you like. But just to back up a little bit, make sure make sure you're in the right area. You found in this case a uh, a, a founder led a founder led uh, stock that's going after a big market has multiple assets. So you found an area you like. With it, okay, I found one you like. So you already you already found it. But in general, find an area you like. Go for founders or go for dividend payers. Go for the small caps because Warren Buffett can't buy the small caps. The best stocks are always going to be in the small caps. Not all small caps are good, but the best ones are always going to be there because they're not picked over by the big institutions and the rich people because they have too much money. 
So the small, so 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 so, so make sure you're in the right neighborhood. Find your find the right stock. Okay, get, you found the right stock. Then, uh, in this case, again, you quest, you already know what, what it is. Uh, but then go to the profile chain. Just, just read about it and see see where it is in the world and see uh, see the see the profile, what they're doing. See if you like it. Uh, see if it's founder led. Uh, see what the market cap is, the size we said, all that. Okay, now you've found it. Now, if I'm starting to be interested in it, now I'll let the company sell. I'll let, and instead of going to a secondary source, Seeking Alpha is not bad. Because Seeking Alpha is just a, a, a pla- and on one hand when, you don't, when the editors and everything don't get involved. It's like the regulators getting involved. When it's just a marketplace of authors, Seeking Alpha is terrific. That idea is terrific. When the editors get involved and manipulate everything, and, and it's uh, so I like the, So the secondary sources like Seeking Alpha are good. But I like to start by letting the company sell the company to me. So what is it that the company is saying is important about the company? So go to their latest presentation. Go to the company's website. Go to the IR page and check out the company's presentation. And so that is, quote unquote, spoon feeding you. Because what you really want to do is get the real story in the annual report and the 10Q. But those things are huge and written by lawyers in part. Uh, so you want to, you want to, you, you want the cliff notes, the cliff notes is their presentation. So start with their presentation and let them sell the story to you and so, and, and start there. So where should you start your DD? I would start on their investor page with their latest presentation and just seeing their story. And that's what I would do in general. When you like a stock, go to their latest presentation on their investor page and let them sell the stock to you and start from there. Don't take them at their word and then and then see how they sell the very same concepts in their annual report. You'll see them talk about the very same things differently in the annual report. They'll be much more cautious and give much more details. They won't, in the, in the, the, the presentation, they'll sell it to you. In the annual report, they'll show you the warts and the and the the risks. Okay, so that's a good start. Start with their their presentation. If you like it, look at the warts and risks in the annual report as, as a as a broad start. Uh, Mike P, if we keep on accumulating shares and don't sell, how to, how do short cover when there is a partnership? And then again, don't believe everything in the annual report too. Then broaden out from there. And then and go to the secondary sources. The best thing about the secondary sources is what we're doing here. When somebody puts out an, uh, writes a, 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 an, an a article on Seeking Alpha, that's terrific. But one of the best things it does is it starts a conversation and, and then you get the back and forth. And you're going to get the most salient points. The, the bears are going to come out and try to rip it apart. And the bulls are going to come out and defend it. And, and, and so the secondary sources are important to help you find that stuff uh, that you didn't find jump out right away. So Mike says, if we keep on and then come to Investors Club and talk about it, if we keep on accumulating shares and don't sell how do shorts cover uh, when there is a partnership, uh, they don't, they, if, there's a, if there's a partnership, they don't, they don't necessarily have to cover. Uh, they, they, so if, there, if there's a partner, they don't have to have to cover it. If it's, if, like, if it's great for the valuation, they could always reshort it. But on the day that they that cassava can pay a cash dividend that reflects their value, if they really are a two hundred billion dollar valuation, if if Simifilam really does work, and uh, let's say we get to the point where Simifilam is approved, and uh, cassava has a legitimate partner, or let's just say it's going to get a legitimate partner, at this point you're talking about real cash, and they could get a milestone or an upfront payments in a partnership that's a multiple of their market cap is 1 billion, 1.08 billion right now. They could get, you, I mean, they could get a double digit billion upfront payment perhaps. And then <laughs> they could pay that out as a dividend. At that point, it'd be hard to say that their share price would still be down here. But that, I mean, they could, they could, they could, wherever their share price was, you could be paying out, uh, let's just say 100% of the share price with a, with a dividend from their cash for upfront payment, the share price would sky, so it wouldn't remain that. But anyway, that's the type of thing. If they pay out that dividend and there really is uh, uh, three times as many shares out there as there should be, uh, then, and then the, the shorts have to pay that. When you pay a cash dividend, the shorts have to pay it. 
that's one of the reasons that the dividend stocks are so good because the shorts have it, it, it costs them to they have to pay out those cash dividends anyway so a partnership wouldn't on its own do it it might sky the stock so they have to cover and short start a short squeeze but a partnership would start cash actual cash flows actual revenues and they would have actual earnings and then they could pay those uh, accrued earnings out as dividends and so that would be the thing that could actually be the unlocking event that would be and it will i mean seriously at, at that point it, it's the same argument that paying out a cash dividend uh wouldn't wouldn't manipulate the market like they tried to stop overstock by saying uh that paying out that issuing a share manipulates the market on the blockchain anyway it's the the, the partnership itself might do it but that wouldn't be the direct uh, thing like paying out a cash dividend from the partnership would be a direct event that would, would square the share count and make it real La Holy can't believe 35 million shares traded yesterday and 44 million shares outstanding and they brought it down. Nobody is looking into it. Yeah, I mean, not and not the SEC. They're looking at it and, and laughing. Mwahahaha. Mike can't since the company has a building based on rent. Could they pay a dividend of, of 0.05 per month? That was a really good, uh, a, a really interesting idea that somebody had. They, since they have a building, they can rent it out, have accrued earnings. They could even issue, then another idea to screw the shorts is they could issue a REIT. They could spin out a REIT. Everybody's, they're allowed to spin out a company. Everybody gets a, a share of the REIT and then the, the shorts have to come up with that share for all the of the uh, shorted shares. That would be great. Uh, the, I guess they could. And that, that wouldn't really do it. That wouldn't be the kind of money that would do it. If they were paying out a cash dividend that was, uh, the amount of ten billion dollars or five billion, that would be literally a multiple of their share price. That would do it. If you you have to look at the borrow rate, the borrow rate is like thirty percent, uh, or the borrow the cost the cost to borrow. That's why the the prime brokers allow there to be so many shares issued because they make so much money on every single one. It's such a money maker. If Casava's at thirty dollars and the bar rate is thirty percent that's nine dollars they get every year and so if they issued a very small dividend that would be okay but they're already paying nine dollars a year you need to issue a dividend like a hundred dollars or something like that then that would screw them over I have to look at it relative to the borrow rate the borrow cost from the Q10, thank you. Lead plaintiff is expected to file an amended consolidated complaint right by August 18th. That's right. I don't know if we'll be privy to that. I suppose we could look at those court documents. Good point, Jake. Maybe we could take a look at those documents. We can sail on without any wind. No headwinds would be nice. H. Tub, you brought us that quote yesterday, right? All, all boats can sail in, the, in a heavy wind or something like that. <laughs> Good. It was a good quote. I appreciate it. Tim, thanks for researching biotech share price for me. Yeah. Although it's not the same, I am hoping Sava will be the next HKD stock, which went from 12 to 25, 50 in a couple of months. It, it, these things can happen. And HKD, I'm not sure if they had a real reason to or not. I still don't understand that one. Still don't understand that one. Silver, Ohio Silver Sava stock chart resembles the twin spires over Churchill Downs. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope we are in the Alzheimer's drug winner's circle very soon. I love that, my friend. Yeah. Uh, but definitely it has not uh, been the fastest two minutes in sports. It's been, it's almost two years I've been, uh, I've been on this now. Unbelievable. I have a derby hat on. Awesome. Rocking your derby. Kababa, Kabata banned naked shorting. Canada banned naked shorting today. Is that right? Dude. Totally awesome. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Quezzy, for the question. I'm not sure if that's... Keep asking, if, uh, please, if you... Uh, so uh, so I, I definitely like... So starting with their, their presentation to let them sell it to you and then look into the annual report in 10Q because then you get the actual risks and, and the details that they, that they don't give you in the broad strokes. Uh, and, and then uh, the, we, we know the management is so important. In this case, he's the founder. So... Dr. Werner, I believe our interview with him, I suppose, was the latest. Or no, there was the conference call. So I would listen. I would listen to their latest. Listen to them and and, and listen to the latest thing. Uh, with the management, there are three things that are objective when it comes to evaluating management. 
your own gut feeling is important and you should go with it. Never, as they say in self-defense, never, uh, never ignore your spidey sense. So you should go with your gut with the management. But that's not objective, of course, that's subjective. There's three objective things with management. One is their history. Uh, what is Their history is, is whatever it is. If they have a history of taking care of shoulders, shareholders, that's great. If they have a history of screwing shareholders and, and taking care of themselves, that's not great. And their history is what it is. So look what they've done before. The second is incentives. Are their incentives aligned with shareholders? In the case of IKT, in the case of, on, the on the first matter, in the case of IKT, I, his, his history is not bad, no bad history. I, I guess it's good. There's no bad history to point to. Incentives, Dr. Milton Werner is easily the largest shareholder of IKT. And uh, his, he, he wants that share price up. He's not just looking for a salary. So his, uh, his share, it seems like his incentives are aligned with yours. And then the third thing is founders. We saw that founders are, uh, they do perform better in like every study, especially in tough times. And uh, they, they get better returns, better, better risk adjusted returns. So there's three objective things, history, incentives, and founders when you're looking at management, but never ignore your spidey sense. And Tim, thanks, Joe. Hope you have a great day. Great week for Saba. Yes, indeed. Canada's largest provincial securities watchdog said late on Friday that it will follow other international authorities with a temporary ban on short selling certain financial stocks. Huh. Temporary and, and yeah, financial stock. That's what I was about to say. Financial stocks. They're protecting the banks again. We saw this before. After, when During 2008, the banking crisis, this is the same uh, SEC and regulating authorities that said, oh no, this naked shorting is not a problem, it's fine. And then when it was the banks that were getting in trouble, they said, you can't naked short the banks. And so, okay, they banned naked shorting. I'm about to say, I guess I saw financial first, but yeah, it's the banks. You can't naked short the banks, the certain financial stocks. That is cruddy, cruddy stuff favoritism. Mike P. Hi, Joe. When do you think the government agencies will release news? Uh, I don't think they will. Uh, I don't, we'll never, the Department of Justice never gives the all, all clear. The SEC creates smoke, but never gives the all clear. Uh, we're, ne we're never going to hear from them ever. <laughs> uh, FBI helped out on that last thing. Uh, the FBI is not involved with this, I don't think, but we're never going to hear from the three letter agencies. Uh, that are supposedly investigating or possibly investigating. When they say, when they find out there's nothing there, they don't go tell everybody he didn't do anything or whatever, you know. So we'll never hear if, if that's the question. John, the Ontario Securities Commission said the ban coming on the heels of similar orders in the U.S., Britain, and countries will be effect until October 3rd. Interesting. Uh, that, that's, uh, that sounds strange to me. Uh, there, I know there's one that they just changed, that added temporary short selling margin, mar they added, changed the margin requirements, FINRA did. Uh, but I looked into that one, uh, I saw that one yesterday, but that one was just in mortgages. So I wonder, I do, so I do know that there, there is some perhaps dislocations in real estate mortgages. So perhaps, and then, then I get once. Once I looked into that, it perhaps seemed legitimate. So perhaps this is related to that and it's legitimate. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe there's so much that's not legitimate. It's tough to believe <laughs> that anybody's doing their job. Meantime, MindMed is down to 33% up. So just like Asabi, you get the pop and then they're, they're selling it off. That seems to be the pattern. But great to see you guys. Thanks for being here. We'll do it again tomorrow. Join the newsletters. Uh, you get the the two if you join the small caps newsletter, you get the two stocks a month. The stocks are doing great, and you get the book How to Crush the Market, and uh, you get the Discord as well. Uh, pay for itself more than ten times over. Sign up for all that stuff. Great to see you guys. Uh, see you in the Discord. Have a great night. See you in the Discord. Have a great night.